Hi, I'm Stuck, and uh, this is Bounty Thursdays. And this show is all about the bug bounty community, about the tools that surrounds it, the open source things, and the research that are related to it. But that doesn't mean that you as a pen tester or an AppSec person can spend time here. This is for you as well. Okay, first, a quick disclaimer. Any of the tools or links or anything that I share on the show are things that I found interesting. And just because it's available for you doesn't mean that you should run off and just smash it everywhere. So know what you're doing before you fire away and get those requests going out there. So the Nox subdomain scanner has now turned into version 5.0 and Nox is a Python 3.2 designed to enumerate subdomains on a target domain through a directionary attack. And what that means that it will take a bunch of subdomains that you have in a list and try all those and see if they resolve and if they do, you're going to be able to get that output. And if you combine that with JSON Haddix all.txt, which kind of contains all the DNS entries from every DNS enumeration tool is a good start. It's been around since 2015 and it's a great tool if you want to use that in a part of your automation to find those alluring new subdomains. It's been updated with a couple of new features. One of the new features that's in here is the possibility for it to get information from external sources and even use the virus total API key here now. So that's a good upgrade. So if this is something that you vibe with, I will recommend you to check that out and maybe, you know, put that into your automation workflow. Another thing when it comes to automation workflow is Nuclei. And Nuclei is a community power vulnerability scanner. It's built around using templates and it's very, very simple to use. They've been very active lately and pushing three different versions in just March alone. So definitely some things going on over there. And since this is all based around templates, there's a lot of people within our community that are working actively by pushing the latest templates to their Git repo. I mean, you even got some of the exchange things in here. This is really interesting stuff and the research is always being updated on an ongoing basis. The format for creating these templates are super simple. All you need to do is to put in what kind of request you want to have, what path you want to use. If there's some other interesting stuff in there or different headers that you would put in, you can put those two in there as well. So it's very, very simple for you to create your own templates on findings that you found before. And the secret sauce here is the word things you found before. Because if you are tempted to take all these templates and you smash them straight, straight into your automation flow and blast them everywhere, you're gonna get hits, but most of those are gonna be dupes. So it's better to use this framework and use the templates to create things with your own payloads. Maybe there's one of those bugs that you found that you want to put into your automation. Then using Nuclei as the framework for that is absolutely the way to go. There's been so many burp updates lately that I can't even stay updated with how many it is. Since they got the new automated version updater, every time I start it feels like I got a new version it's kicking out. A lot of people like the new stuff, but a lot of people don't. So you need to weigh in what kind of version that you like, but eventually the old version is going to be legacy and you know, you're going to be with a 2020 or 2021 version. And if you want to know what happens behind the scenes of the browser powered scanning module inside Burp Suite, head over to portsuite.net and check that out. They got a full description, how the request works, how fast they are, why things are working. They are discussing the Chromium version that you're using and all that nice stuff that, that makes the browser powered scanning engine work. If that's something you're into, definitely check that out. Speaking of Burp, there's a newsletter out there now that's all dedicated to everything Burp. It's called the Burp Suite Guide. And one thing that really stick, stuck out to me is the response that Nicholas Grigori did on Twitter on a, re, on a question that says, how to active scan all the requests passing through Burp. And this is actually how you do it. So you start a new live task and inside that selection, you will go for live audit, select proxy, and then define the suite scope. Also make sure that you do your scan configuration here in the correct way. So you know what kind of requests you're sending through because 
it's now going to send whatever that you configured to each and every request that goes through the proxy. So here you're saying, why would this even be useful? Well, imagine for a second that you're using a tool like Axiom or something that at scale is collecting a lot of data. Um, maybe they're looking for parameters or maybe you're doing one-liners and looking for using Gao and collecting parameters and certain stuff. And you want to scan all those for, I don't know, XXS or something. What you could do if that doesn't support it, you can use patch it through HTTPX, use the proxy functionality there and boom, you're going to have it inside Burp. And Burp's going to run all its own scanners on it and you will get the results. Although be careful with this. Don't go live and do that at scale because it's going to be noisy. Speaking about newsletters, SecureDB probably has the best bug bounty community related newsletter out there. Start off, the whole website is awesome. The design looks so good. There's a lot of information here. It's very, very easy. And all you need to do is to sign up for the email address. And what you're going to get in return is a lot of information. I mean, check this out. Here, here are some research information that he posted lately. It's a full NahamCon 2021 recap. And then, hey, it's, it's, it's just filled with awesome stuff that surrounds our community. So if you aren't already a subscriber of the Security Bee newsletter, I definitely recommend you to sign up for that. And since we're talking about Naham Khan, first off, amazing thing. Thank you, Naham Sek, for putting that through. Thank you for all the speakers and everyone. Ben's been on vacation and he's back now, so we can expect to get the videos up on YouTube really, really soon. And one of the sponsors of the NahamCon was Integrity. And Integrity got a new challenge out. I mean, if you're into XXSs and you love to get a little bit of challenge, I totally recommend you to try out the Integrity's XXS challenges. They're always very well done and super, super cool to play. It's open all the way until March the 28th and you can win some swag and some awesome other stuff. And since you're getting 50, 50 euros, hey, you can get yourself a nice hacker hat, a pair of socks and even a beanie. And Integrity is also the sponsor of this show. And if you want to sign up for their website, hack on some really nice European programs and get paid in euros, I recommend you use my sign up URL, which is go.integrity.com slash stoke. I got a package from India this week. It's from my friends over at Beadsides Ahmedabad. And not only did I get a really nice personal note, I also got this t-shirt that they made for me. Isn't that sweet? So cool. So if you want to attend B-Sides Ahmedabad, that's going to be on Friday the 26th of November. And do check out their Twitter if you want to participate in that. Okay, there's another service that I've been falling in love with lately, and that is Security Trails. It has a massive amount of data collected when it comes to subdomains. So even if you're doing brute forcing, it could be a good thing to collect data and then see what kind of naming standards these organizations have. And they currently have the bug bounty hunting month, which means that they lower the price. So instead of $99 a month, you pay $50 a month. No, Security Trades is not a sponsor of this show, but I just like their service so much that I recommend you to use it. It's already implemented into software like AMAS and Axiom. So they got all these cool APIs that you can send requests to and get data out. And, and since it can, can be quite tricky to, uh, I don't know, put that curl command into your bash, bash code, Hacklook recently created a wrapper around the API request and it's called Hacktrades. Written in Go and it's very, very simple to use. Let's say for instance that you had a list of domains. You would just cat those domains into Hacktrails Ask for the subdomains, you can get the data out. But that's just not it. Maybe you're interested in seeing associated IPs collected with that. So you can expand your scope, find more things to look at, maybe reverse some of those, get new domains, and yeah, okay, yeah, you get the whole idea. Expand your attack surface. I did an OWASP talk last week. I talked about training and I talked about, you know, try hack me. I talked about uh, Web Application Academy and all those stuff. But then I stumbled upon Contra. And Contra is an application security training platform, which is really, really nice. Uh, I haven't tried their paid versions, but the free ones are very intuitive and super, super fun, especially for beginners, since it explains everything for you in such a good way. So if we open this one up, 
it's gonna start off by just guiding us through the process, which is, I think is pretty cool. And it's gonna give you all this play by play setup. So you'll copy this URL here, paste it in, smash it away, and then it's gonna request you in the storyline to click forget your password. And it's gonna tell the story about the password that they found because this attacker is gonna try to brute force his way into Alice's account. But then it's gonna break down the different ways how this request is getting sent for you, how it looks. So we send the request in, it explains you what's happening happening here and then eventually how the response is going to look like and then it's going to continue down this path where you eventually change version 3 to version 2 and you're finding ways to bypass certain scenarios like rate limiting and which allows you to brute force and then eventually do an account takeover and get access to the system. It's very intuitive, it's easy to follow along and it's very instructive. And they don't only have one for the API, uh, API they also have one for the OWASP top 10 where you can go through all these trainings here and just have fun. And it's all free. I like that. There's always a great, great amount of talks over at Nahomcom, but one that always, you know, sticks out. As soon as I see his name in any kind of talk or presentation, I'm attending. So, you know, listening to Shubbs talk about IIS hacking, it, it's such a blessing. I mean, he knows that inside and out. It's just a trip just going through it. You will learn about, you know, vhost hopping and it's going to present present different kind of file disclosure ways and RCEs and how you how you attack it using different kind of attack vectors. It's really really interesting. Okay, I struggle with regex. I'm not donut. I don't know all the regex combinations inside and out. But I really enjoy it and I think it's very, very helpful. And especially now with a lot of new research coming out, it's something that I need to deep dive into. And that's why I'm grateful that tools like Grix exists. And it's a very, very easy tool for you to use. For example, let's say that you want to make a regex for A, B and C. You, you Grex that and it's going to give you the regex example out of it. And then you can play around with different combinations and eventually you will understand how you type those regexes. Uh, but this is a very, very good tool set to, to learn that. So get Grex up and running try to you know figure out your different kind of requests and and get that nice regex skills up because you're gonna need it because there's a lot of really interesting research coming out in that area i mean reg exploits is for one where diana sec and their crew found a way to find something called redos which is a denial of service situation where the red regex is just loops and you can get the system to hang or just freeze. Definitely check out their whole research here over at their blog post on their website. And then we got Evan's research. Evan's probably more known as DefParam and the work that he did with Smuggler, which was an HTTP request smuggling desync testing tool that was written in Python. He's back now again and he's doing some really interesting fussing when it comes to regexes and ways to bypass those. Because we know that websites try to protect themselves from SSRFs and open redirects by using regexes so you can not access systems that you're not supposed to. And by using the tool regexfuss, what you could do is to, first you'll teach the application a bit of the things that you're looking for. In this case, it's gonna be subdomains. And then inside the code, you put in the regex that you wanna break and you send it away. And after a couple of seconds, what's gonna happen is that eventually it's gonna crash. And the result is that it found a payload. So if you had 888.questionmark.example2.com, that's gonna pass through. So an attacker in this case could escape this one by typing in evil.com.questionmark.example.com to bypass the filter because the site would eventually visit just evil.com. I don't know how useful it will be inside bounties since you gotta need to have access to regex itself, but I still think this is really cool research and worth looking into. And I think that's about everything we have for this week. If you like the things that I do and want to support, head over to patreon.com slash Doug Frederick and uh, be a Patreon. You don't have to, but it's very appreciated, of course. 
Oh yeah, I've almost forgot. My adaptable blue light sunglasses has went into production and I'm very, very excited to see what the casing is going to look like when they come out. They are fully adaptable. So currently inside there's going to be blue light and but when you go outside, they're going to fade slowly into a darker format like these ones here. So you can protect those eyes. Well, until next time, stay curious.